In chapter 19, Lynn is super self-conscious at school the day after the incident. She meets Sally, cigarettes in hand, and this is in the restroom. Lynn expects the worst, as though Sally is going to absolutely rip into her. This is Sally Swanepoel. Remember, they discuss... Um, well, sorry, they've described her as quite, like, tartish. You know, she loves to, like, show off her legs and things like that. And, um, yeah, she doesn't have the best uh, behaviors right now. She's also got a cigarette in hand. Uh, yeah, she's just, I guess, known for all the wrong things at school. You guys know what I mean. I'm, I'm trying not to be too, like, explicit with what I'm saying. And, yeah, now we have a lot of empathy from Sally right now. And she unexpectedly acknowledges that her dad is an alcoholic as well and sometimes he smokes the heavy stuff too so that's the the green cigarettes and sally says it is not our fault looking into lynn's eyes before strutting off so sally she is battling her own demons at home and i love this it is not our fault it's not their fault it's not lynn's fault it's not sally's fault their parents have made these decisions for themselves they continue with these behaviors. And look, maybe a few of you watching these videos know someone that's battling with alcoholism. Maybe it's your parents. Who knows? I, I hope it's not you. But people suffering from this, from addiction, and those around them, they should never take accountability and feel like, oh, you know, I'm the reason that my mom's an alcoholic or anything like that. It's it's not our fault. And Danny Betts tells Lena and Brom to have lunch with her after school. And guess who's there? Kaifi. Kaifi waits for them. And Kofi breaks the news that, look, your mom has been admitted into a clinic for the rehabilitation and she's going to be treated for three to four weeks. And in the meantime, Tani Betts is going to look after them. And patients are not allowed phone calls or visits at the start of their treatment. So, as per usual, Lynn is out on the streets right now, tells Tibby what's going on. Tibby says, look, it's going to pass and people will know it's not her fault. So everyone is saying, look, Lynn, you do not have to take accountability for this. A few days pass and Tani Betts invites Lynn to visit her mom in the clinic, but Lynn has quite a few excuses. During a repetition break, Lynn chats with Ayn, Ayn Fender, the mouth organ guy who was playing the song Moon River. Remember, Lynn gets involved in a relationship with him and they take each other to the matric dance toward the end of the book. His father wants him to become an attorney. But Hein prefers to build and he wants to make things with his hands. Mimi invites Lin home for the weekend. So Lin has a bit of escapism now. She doesn't have to go out on the streets or anything like that. Or, yeah, she can just chill out a bit. And Lin begins to dream of her old friends at her old house in Pretoria. Remember, they used to live in a pretty posh house in the suburbs. And now, unfortunately, they're living in a bit of an apartment tenement type block. And her two friends, Sumeru, Sumeru, Sumari and Sanmari, I know. Like, what do you guys think of those names? Uh, Sumari and Sanmari, I don't know. Maybe it's cute when they're younger, but like when they're older, really? Su Sumari and Sanmari? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, behind the glass partition of the indoor swimming pool. Indoor swimming pool. Everybody that is literally screaming wealth. And she doesn't have the courage to call them. She doesn't have it in her to call them because she doesn't want to have to explain like, oh, look. This is why I'm not living there anymore. My father's in prison. My mom's an alcoholic. Like, this is what I'm going through. She uh, doesn't have the courage to call them because, well, to some degree, she does feel ashamed.